Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be enjoying a war action film, entitled Saints and Soldiers, The Void. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins with Carrie Sims, Sergeant John Atwood and Rodney Ramrod Mitchell cramped up inside their M18 Hellcat tank destroyer with its nickname The Avenging Angel and waiting for the go signal to engage. Atwood then gets a confirmation from their captain to wait until it's completely dark before they move closer to the prison camp they are assigned to attack. At a German prison camp, a Stalock commander reprimands the prisoners as three of them attempt to escape. Two have been killed. He warns them that he'd not be forgiving if it happens again. Moments later, there's a huge explosion and this prison camp gets liberated. Mitchell checks the oil leak from his tank. Private Nelson ludicrously makes fun of Mitchell and the two engage in a play fight. Mitchell puts Nelson in a wrestling move called Nelson forcing him to apologize to the tank for the comments he made earlier. Sergeant Atwood catches them and asks them to quit with the horse playing. A huge task is at hand. John Atwood and Max Whitaker receive an order from Captain F. Britain McConkey to patrol the small town of Brownledge as some Nazis are still resisting despite the war being over already. Whitaker requests for a gunner and Artwood suggests that Nelson is the perfect replacement. The captain agrees. He then informs them that General Allen is visiting their camp and that they should be back in one piece. Sims confronts Sergeant Jesse Owens for getting closer to his M18 tank destroyer. Owens goes back to his truck and loads up with the liberated Allied prisoners. He shares with Private Perry, another soldier assigned to drive the second truck, that he used to be a tank operator. He and Private Perry are tasked to transport the prisoners while Atwood and his team are commissioned to clear the roads. Private Daniel Barlow, Sims and Nelson are eating when Mitchell arrives. Barlow trades the books he looted with Mitchell's cigarettes. Whitaker and Atwood join in and Nelson is told that he's been promoted as a loader for Whitaker's unit. Atwood reprimands Barlow for smoking. He's been reminded not to smoke around the ammo before. Barlow explains that he keeps forgetting despite being a loader. Mitchell chimes in and tells Atwood that Barlow's IQ came back negative. Owens goes to the back of his truck to inform the freed prisoners that they are near their destination. Lieutenant Goss, a British soldier, is asked about his experience back in the prison camp and how Klaus Schoenbeck treated him when he got caught trying to escape with two other prisoners. Goss shares that Schoenbeck took them into the woods. He was certain he'd be killed. Schoenbeck then took his revolver, removed the bullets but left two of them. The prisoners were asked to point the gun to their head and pull the trigger. One prisoner pointed the gun at Schoenbeck but it did not go off. He was killed immediately. The other one tried to run away but he was also shot in the back. Goss tried to go for the gun on the ground but he got caught and was hit in the face with a rifle. He was knocked out cold. At an intersection, Owens is told by a military police that he needs to use a different route on their way to Brownledge as the Germans blew a hydro dam last night that flooded the road. Owens informs the freed prisoners that they will be passing through the void. A 100 miles of debris and carnage. He then invites Goss to transfer to the front to be more comfortable as the potholes seem to bother him. Owens shares how it's better to drive trucks than to be forced to be at the back of a bus back in the US due to the color of his skin. Ahead of them is a fake body lying on the road. Both trucks slow down to check if it's a real person. All of a sudden, a German tank or a panzer blows the back of Perry's truck that kills everyone right away. German soldiers then come out from all directions and start shooting at them. Owens and Goss manage to escape and hide on a tower. While this is happening, the two hell tanks just arrived at the intersection without their knowledge that the trucks ahead of them already being attacked. Atwood tells his team that they will be passing through the void. Moments later, they see a German family by the side of the road as their car breaks down. Whitaker speaks with them in German and finds out that they are on their way to their uncle's farmhouse. They check his documents, frisk him, and confiscate his gun. Sending that they are not an immediate threat, the family is then let go despite Sims' objection. Sims would have preferred to report them. Owens and Goss are being tailed by the Germans but manage to find a way to run away from them back to the main road. They come across Atwood and his team and let them know that they have been ambushed. Atwood and Goss go back to the ambush site. Using binoculars, it does not take long for Atwood to spot that the Germans are using a panzer that's been dug in. When Goss takes over the device, he is able to identify that the commanding officer is Schoenbeck, a retired tank commander. The same person who killed the two prisoners that attempted to escape with him. Owens confides to Whitaker that the tank that they are on used to be his. Sims and Whitaker show dislike over Owens. He also asks him if he punched an officer before. 
Sims comes up with ridiculous accusations to make Owens feel unwelcome. Atwood and Goss are back. Atwood tells everyone what they just discovered. He then asks Sims to inform the command post but Sims is having a hard time contacting them. Sims asks Nelson from the first tank to contact the command post but he can't get through as well. Atwood suggests that they attack the panzer and move on. Their strategy is for Atwood's tank to go first and lure the German tank to aim at them. That's where Whitaker comes in and annihilates the panzer. Whitaker suggests that Owens rides with them as he knows the drill being a former hell tank operator himself. Atwood gives this a go signal despite the protests from the other soldiers. Atwood's tank goes first according to plan. The German tank gets its attention and begins to aim at it. Whitaker shoots at the panzer twice but the tank barely sustains damages. To their surprise, two more panzers come out of nowhere. Atwood warns Whitaker but there is no time for him and his tank to react. Whitaker is injured and his tank is destroyed. He manages to find Goss and asks him to tell the rest of the team where he is at. Meanwhile, Atwood's tank gets surrounded by soldiers on foot and Atwood is badly injured as well. Moments later, he dies. The Hellcat tank one where Owens, Sims, Atwood, and Barlow are at is unable to cross a bridge. Their choices are either to cross and take the risk of the bridge collapsing or to go back and confront the Germans. Sims desperately tries to contact the command post again but to no avail. The Avenging Angel and all its personnel are now sitting ducks. Goss gets to reunite with the rest of the team. He tells them that Whitaker is wounded but alive. Sims asks Goss what their next move would be but Goss suggests that they should get the orders from Owens as he has the highest rank among them. This does not sit well with Sims who begins to give orders to the team. Sims wants to break the tank apart and leaves the area. Owens tells him that he should not run away just because they are outnumbered and that the lives of more Americans will be at risk including the general's life if the area is not cleared. Sims accuses Owens of fighting his own battle and that his pursuit to become a hero is to make his cotton picker father proud. Owens shares that his father was a decorated soldier who fought bravely in France. France gave him a well-deserved recognition but America did not do to his race. In fact, his father was lynched for demanding equality. The confrontation is interrupted when a tank is headed their way. Owens climbs up a tower to have a better view of the incoming tank. He gives hand signage to the team below. He then lowers down a radio wire to Goss to be used as an antenna for them to communicate with the command post. This proves to be their much needed lucky break. Sims is now able to transmit their current situation to their base. Captain McConkey is sending reinforcements. In the meantime, Captain McCorky wants to make sure that the general is warned not to proceed with the plan of coming over as he'd be passing by the battlefield. Unfortunately, the general and his team have already left. Military police are then sent to go chase the general's convoy and warn him. Owens convinces Sims to use the Pac-40 that they found earlier. Pac-40 is a standard German anti-tank gun. Sims is hesitant but gives in knowing that this could be their only chance before one of the tanks closes in and drives them out into the open. As one of the German tanks slowly moves in to attack the Hellcat, Sims fires at it but misses. Despite the miss, the attempt pays dividends as the Panzer fires at them giving the Hellcat enough time to aim at that Panzer and destroy it. Meanwhile, Goss is able to move closer to the other Panzer. He climbs up and kills the gunner and the rest of its personnel inside. Only one German tank is left at this point. Goss remains committed to track down Schoenbeck. He manages to confront him and takes one of his men hostage. Schoenbeck kills the German hostage without hesitation and hits Goss in the process. As he is on the verge of finishing Goss up, one of his soldiers shoots him behind his back at point blank. Schoenbeck is killed. The soldier then hands over a gun to Goss and raises his hand along with the other soldier. They are surrendering to Goss. Meanwhile, Owens and Sims take down four Germans at a tower. At this point, Sims is starting to see Owens' value. Owens explains the reason why he assaulted the officer that Sims asked about earlier. That officer sent Owens and his team on a suicide mission despite his protest. The Hellcat is backtailed behind by a panzer. Owens grabs a Panzerfaust and comes up with a strategy with Sims. The Hellcat has to look like it's burning and in a pretty bad shape. The last remaining panzer then goes for it and passes by right above where Owens is waiting. It's a dangerous move as this could kill Owens but that's their only option at this time. Their plan works as the panzer chases the Hellcat when it notices that dark smoke is coming out of it. The panzer takes the bait. When it's about to pass Owen's location, Owen gears up to give it a go. As soon as its rear is exposed, Owens has a clear shot at it. He then fires the Panzerfaust and destroys the panzer. Though wounded from the blast, Owen survives. 
Meanwhile, General Allen and his team who have no idea what just transpired, arrive on the battlefield. They come across the wounded Whitaker who told what just happened. When the smoke clears, General Allen thanks Owens. Allen also confirms the Sims reported to him that without Owens, the Germans would have still held the area and more lives would have been lost. The general will recommend for a Silver Star, the third highest military decoration for valor in combat. Owens and Sims bury the hatchet. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this and to help the channel grow.